it's Mary and today I'm finally going to film my Edinburgh book haul. I, I don't know how to call it to be honest because maybe it sounds like all these like books are about Edinburgh but they're not. Um, I've been to Edinburgh in early June because my sister currently lives there um, for work and I went to visit her uh, finally uh, because it's the first time I go um, with the whole pandemic situation and stuff and also having a baby in, in, in the meantime. And she um, went there when my son was just born uh, four years ago. And so yeah, um, we've been there and it was uh, great. And we obviously, we've been to many bookshops there. Some of them were secondhand bookshops and some others, I think a couple of them were not. And I sort of, I wrote down where I got each and every um, book. I don't know why. I don't know why it's relevant, but I'm probably going to put also like pictures of the shop uh, if I can find find it and also link the shop down below. Um, they were all great shops. Let's start from books that I got that are not used um, and then I'm gonna go into the used ones. So first up, which but it's not the order in which I visited the bookshops. Um, so first we have Ghostwell by Sarah Moss. Sorry, I have a cat, which I never had before, um, from yesterday. And he's been meowing a lot, right? I know, I'm trying to film a video. This I bought in a Lighthouse bookshop. And this is the, the bookmark. Uh, and this is Ghostwell by Sarah Moss. Uh, I've been meaning to read Sarah Moss since forever. Uh, at the title zone was the book that I've heard the most talked about on YouTube and I still plan to read that one too but I don't know this one is very short and I heard it's very good obviously um, and also uh, recently Mercedes over at Mercedes Bookish, Bookish Musings um, pointed out that this one could be a good read for summer and actually I've already read this one just recently um so I'm not going to talk about this but I really enjoyed it um just a spoiler uh and yeah I'm not gonna talk extensively about these books just because when I uh, make a haul I don't really probably I don't know that much about the books or I don't remember and I want to keep it that way uh I'm not big on synopsis um, and and stuff so yeah a ghost wall and I think I've got two books in Lighthouse bookshop yes I did the other one is The Hate Race by Maxine Beniba Clark and this one I've also heard a lot um, of praise of and it, this is a non-fiction book um, and I think the author is Australian it's a memoir I would say uh, on the author being black and in Australia and I just heard that it's very good very well written as well and so yes that's why I got it then we have in topping topping I think I've got three or four books I think I got four topping was the first one we visited I mean the aesthetic of every uh, bookshop we've been to is amazing. Um, and yeah, Topping was great, very big. It had big ladders that you could slide and yes. So I've got there, these are also all new. No wait, more than, are there more than, oh yeah, five. I got five books in Topping. So we have Fault Lines by Emily Itami, um, which uh, from what I remember, it's like, it, it is a fiction book about the author regretting or maybe cheating on her husband um, and she has children and yes but it's you know a sort of story about relation relationships and just being a mother and a housewife and I've heard amazing I think I honestly I think I heard Mercedes talk about this one um, but I could be wrong maybe I heard even more people talk about this and I just I grabbed it as soon as I saw it because, yeah, it just sounds like something I would really enjoy. I don't know why, but I have like three books that are sort of the, the authors are Japanese. Um, I don't think this one is translated though. Uh, I think the author wrote it in English. 
Yes, exactly. She grew, I mean, she's from Tokyo, but she uh, grew up in London and everything. So, yeah. Um, and then, since we're on a Japanese kick, I also got Harmless Like You uh, by Rowan Izaho, uh, Iz Hizayo Bukanan. Um, sorry, I scared the cat. It's been so long since this book has been on my TBR that I don't remember anything. I just know that this book is sad. At least that's what I remember. And I remember being obsessed with this cover, um, and I couldn't. I, the reason why I didn't buy it straight away when I heard someone talk about it is probably because I couldn't find this exact cover. And when I saw it, I just I grabbed it. So this one, and another um, one is All the Lovers in the Night, which is the new release of uh, Mieko Kawakami. This one is translated by Sam Bett and David Boyd, I think. Because I do sort of, I read, this is, yeah, Sam Bett and David, Boy, and David Boyd, and I remember because I read already like two, yes, I read two books by the author and, and I liked them. The first one I had more problems with, but I really enjoyed the writing style and also the translation or how her writing style translates. Um, and so I'm, I was very curious uh, to check out her new one. And this one is also signed which is a, you know, a plus. I mean, I would have I would have gotten it anyway, but you know, they had a signed copies there and I I got one. Um, and also in topping, I've got Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This one, I really don't want to know anything about it. I know it's it's like a fantasy sort of whimsical or I don't know if it's like magical realism, but it's just People say that it's weird and they don't, they can't really figure out what, what's happening exactly. There's this sort of man trapped in a place or something. I don't want to know. I just think it sounds amazing and I've read, I've never read anything by Susanna Clark, but I'm very intrigued by this one. And then I've got Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. Yes, Lively. Um, and I've talked, I think I talked recently about this book um, in particular because I did read another book by her that is a um, children's book, basically, a book, a middle grade book, um, and called uh, Stitch in Time. And I really, really enjoyed that one. And when I heard, you know, that the author also wrote for adults. I thought I'd check out something written for adults too. Um, and this one, I don't know a lot, but I just know that it's set, like this is a first world war novel, which I'm not usually a fan of. I don't like war novels at all, but I'm always willing to try something, you know, and I don't want to rule the, the genre um, out. And also it, being the author, so skilled, uh, at least from what I gathered from the other book. I really want to check out some of her adult stuff. So I got this one. Um, then I went to Edinburgh Books Westport and this, uh, this I got used, even though it doesn't look used at all. It's super new. Um, and it's The Color Purple by Alice Walker. And yes, I've, I've heard I've heard about this book even before book two because it's just that um, famous, I would say. And yeah, I hope it's, it lives up to the hype. And this is an epistolary novel where the author, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a novel where the protagonist writes um, letters to God, I believe, um, talking about her experience. Um, or maybe, no, it's about two people. I don't wanna know a lot. I just know that I've been meaning to read this book for ages and I found it and I got it. And then I've been to Armchair Books, which is such a lovely place. And it, the, the, the bad thing about this place is that it was so full of people that it was really hard to navigate. Um, and I hate when small, um, secondhand bookshops are full of people like half of them were probably just t tourists not that i'm not a tourist myself but i felt like they were just there because apparently this bookshop is very sort of famous um and characteristic uh and just very pretty in general so probably people were there also to just look at it but i just i just wanted to look at books uh and I, when i i need quiet 
when I'm in a bookshop. I need quiet, I need time to browse without people having to pass um, and just, you know, having to move around and yeah. So, but it was, it was a, a great bookshop anyway. And I got The Warden by Anthony Trollope, which I just wanted to get something by him um, because I've heard amazing things about him, but I couldn't find a book that would satisfy me and I just I got this one because it looked like short and also it was used but not battered but apparently this is like the first book in a sort of series which I had no idea or I wouldn't have gotten it because you know I, do, I just want to purchase the whole thing and I don't think it's wise to start with a series with an author like this one like a classic um, author that I've never read before but yeah, that's what I've got. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to really choose properly, probably. Uh, but yes, this is The Warden by Anthony Trollope. Then I've been to Till's. I think, yes, I have the bookshop of that too. Um, and the girl there was so nice. And it was an amazing... Yeah, I've got two books at Till's. Um, and I've got The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I don't read, I don't really read YA um, almost ever, which is weird for me because I, I love like TV shows for and about teenagers. So I don't know what's up with books, but every time I try to read YA, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, but I thought I'd check out Holly Black because I remember Mercedes, Mercedes again, <laughs> I know I'm talking about her a lot, but I don't know, she influences me um, in my book books choice. <laughs> what can I do? Uh, but yeah, because we have, we share a similar taste, especially in like older sort of books um, of our teenage years. And like me, she, she liked Holly Black when she was a teenager, and I did too. I remember reading some of her books, but I never read anything else by her. Um, and and this, so this is a series actually, but since it's used, um, I don't know. I just, got, I, I just got the first one, and if I like it, I'm gonna keep on with the series. And this sounds like fun, just fantasy, a bit dark. Um, I don't even know if this is a YA or is for adults, to be honest. No, teenage fiction. Okay, this is a YA. But I wouldn't have gotten it, you know, even if it was, yes, YA. Winner of the Silver Inky for Best International YA Book. So, yes, this one. Um, it just sounds fun and I want to try, sometimes I do try YA to see if maybe I'm just not getting the right books. <laughs> and also there I've got uh, An American Marriage by Tayari, Tayari Jones. This book has been talked about a lot on YouTube, I know. Um, and I actually wanted to check out uh, Silver, The Silver Sparrow, is that how it's called? The Silver Sparrow um, by the same author, which is, this one is, um, it was written before The Silver Sparrow, but I just, that the other one sounded more like something I would enjoy. But since Again, since it was used um, and not, you know, it's not in a bad condition. I just thought I got, you know, I got my hands on it. Um, and if I like it, of course, I'm going to check out the Silver Sparrow. I hope that's the right title, too. Um, and yes, this is just about a marriage um, and how the marriage falls apart, from what I remember. Um, yes. And then I've been to, I think this is really the last one I've been to. We've been to, actually. I wasn't alone. Um, and it was Main, Main Point Books. Um, and this is Gold by Dan Rhodes. I don't remember what it's about. But I remember Simon over at Savage Reads talking about this. The only thing I don't like is the cover. I absolutely hate the cover design but it was like that everywhere even the one that was on my list you know the brand new one was the same um edition so i thought whatever um and this one is also like surprisingly signed as i said this is used and it says also i, I can't I could, i'm not sure about a word that i'm reading here but it apparently says to alan look i'm still trading best wishes done roads Still trading? I'm not sure I know what that means. 
but I think I think that's what it says, doesn't it? I don't know. Anyway, used, signed, and sounds like fun. I think it's about a town and a village um, and a girl. Yes, no, I'm, I won't even attempt uh, the synopsis of this one. But I just, I remember being intrigued by the description that Simon over at Savage Reads gave. These are all the books I purchased in Edinburgh. I hope you enjoyed my book haul. Please talk to me about the books that I bought and tell me if you've been to any of these bookshops. I would love to know. Um, I thought they were all amazing for different reasons and um, yeah. So I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye!